Diabetes Connections is brought to you by the One Touch brand, providing diabetes management solutions for people living with diabetes, including the One Touch Vario Flex blood glucose meter and the One Touch Reveal mobile app. Taking a step forward starts with seeing where you are. And by Dexcom, take control of your diabetes with the world's first continuous glucose monitoring system that sends glucose readings directly to your compatible smart device. Live life on your own terms with Dexcom. Hey, it's Stacy. This podcast is not intended as medical medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacy Sims. This week, Dexcom takes on a new partner, Lilly, as the insulin maker enters the device market. They're looking at creating an ecosystem for people with diabetes that would include insulin pumps, that would include connected, like, like say, Bluetooth-connected insulin pens, and apps and smart devices. And the Dexcom CGM would be an integral part of their ecosystem. We talked to Dexcom Senior U.S. Medical Director Tomas Walker about this new partnership and about Dexcom's G6 now waiting for FDA approval. What features does the newest Dexcom system have? Plus, have you heard of the Genteel, a gentle and very different Lansing device? Our company mission, we're worldwide because diabetes is worldwide, is to reduce pain as much as possible. If it doesn't hurt, people will test more often. That's Dr. Christopher Jacobs, the inventor of the Genteel. We'll find out more about the device and why Dr. Jacobs came out of retirement to invent it and run the company. It all starts now on Diabetes Connections. Welcome to another week of the show. So glad to have you here. Hope you had a terrific Thanksgiving. Man, this time of year, everything just starts going really fast. But we have some great shows coming up. If you are new to the podcast, we educate and inspire about type 1 diabetes by sharing stories of connections, by talking to influencers, healthcare companies, tech folks, and everyday people living with diabetes. My son was diagnosed with type 1 just before he turned 2. He is turning 13 soon. It is hard to believe, but we are marking 11 years with diabetes. My husband has type 2. I have a background in broadcasting, and that is how you get the podcast. It may have gotten lost in the news right before Thanksgiving, but late last week, there was a Wall Street Journal article about Lilly, the insulin maker, turning its attention to diabetes devices. And I will link up the article. I'm actually going to link up the Twitter link, because that way you don't have to pay. There's a paywall on Wall Street Journal, but their Twitter stuff is is usually available in full. So I'll put that in the show notes. And that's how we all kind of found out about Lilly and Dexcom's new partnership. So we'll be talking about that coming up in just a couple of minutes. You know, I remember this from last year. It seems like in the month of December, really the last five months of the year, a lot of stuff kind of comes out. Some of it comes out quietly because they know that a lot of people aren't paying attention to social media and the news, right? But a lot of uh, approvals seem to happen and new uh, devices are introduced. So stay tuned over the next couple of weeks because there's a lot of good stuff, I believe, on the way and we will be sure to bring that to you. One fun thing that's coming up for my family is we are, we're big Disney fans and we are going to Disney over the winter break for a couple of days. And I bring this up only because Next week, I am talking to the man behind intensive Disney planning. And why am I talking to Len Testa, who is the uh, author of the Unofficial Guide to Disney World and the Touring Plans website? Because... An endocrinologist asked him to use his Disney expertise, and there's a lot of math here, to help better prescribe diabetes medication. I know. That's what I said. What? So I'll be talking to him next week and bring you the whole story. Get some Disney tips if you're heading there on vacation as well and find out how cutting your weight in line for Space Mountain can help somebody get a better medication for their type 2 diabetes. It's pretty wild stuff. Okay, so that's next week. And of course, the best way to make sure you never miss a show is to subscribe. So wherever you are listening to the podcast, whatever podcast app you use, please make sure to subscribe to the show. That way you don't have to hunt it down. It's always there for you. And it, it loads overnight, always Tuesday. So when you wake up Tuesday morning, you'll have it on your phone or wherever you listen. All right, let me tell you about one of our sponsors about One Touch. One Touch has been 
been a trusted brand in blood glucose management for more than 30 years. This year, U.S. News & World Report named OneTouch the number one pharmacist recommended in blood glucose monitoring devices and lancets based on a survey of pharmacists nationwide. Find out more about OneTouch brand products at diabetes-connections.com and click on the OneTouch logo. Before we get to Tomas Walker and Dexcom, just a little bit about uh, the rest of this year and next year. A couple of changes come into the show in the new year. You'll be hearing more about that. But for the rest of this year, we had a, a lot of great feedback on social media about the Thanksgiving show, where four people with diabetes helped me roundtable and give their advice about the holiday, how to make it easier. And if you have any stories you'd like to share about the holidays still to come, obviously Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever you celebrate this time of year, let me know how you navigate with diabetes or how, you know, you help your child. Because I heard that just the one or two stories, you know, just hearing about the finally rejecting the sugar-free cherry pie, you know, talking to people openly about what their expectations were or telling people, you know, it's none of your business nicely, um, that really seemed to help. So if you've got a story like that or a way that you travel with type 1, I'd love to hear more. You can ping me on social media. I'll be asking this question in the Facebook group, which is Diabetes Connections, the group. Um, It is a closed Facebook group, so you have to ask to join, but very easy. I'd I'd love to have you in there. But you can also email me, Stacey, S-T-A-C-E-Y, at diabetes-connections.com, or ping me on social media. And in the new year, as I said, a couple of changes are coming. I think it's all for the good, and I'm excited to bring you some new sponsors, um, some new show formatting, and I'll roll those out as they come in, but I think you'll be really pleased, especially those among you who've said, you know, we want to get to the interviews a little bit quicker. I listen, and uh, we're always improving. I mean, if you go back to the first episode in June of 2015, it probably doesn't sound a lot like what it sounds now, but hey, that's the way it goes. Okay, let me tell you about, hey, our other sponsor about Dexcom. We started using the Dexcom Continuous Glucose Monitoring System four years ago. Did you know we started on Christmas Day when Benny had just turned nine? And it was a whole new world. The Dexcom CGM system changed the way we looked at his type 1 diabetes. When you can see and track glucose levels on a screen, it's incredible, especially if you've relied only on finger sticks for a long time like we did. It becomes so much easier to spot trends and head off extreme highs and lows. The Dexcom G5 Mobile Continuous Glucose Monitoring System is the first FDA-approved device to let you make treatment decisions without pricking your finger. CGM-based treatment requires finger sticks for calibration, may result in hypoglycemia if calibration not performed or symptoms expectations do not match CGM readings. For more information, go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. My guest today is Dexcom's Senior U.S. Medical Director, Tomas Walker. I asked him to come on really a couple of weeks ago to talk about the G6, the new Dexcom system that has been submitted to the FDA. Well, just about the second we wrapped the interview, come to find out that Dexcom and Lilly are partnering, Lilly, the insulin maker. Lilly now says it is going into the device market and apparently has been doing so quietly behind the scenes and not publicly for quite some time. Big article in the Wall Street Journal last week and a big thank you to a listener, I'll talk more about that after the interview, who made sure to bring this to my attention. That was very cool and I appreciate that very much. So what you're going to hear is Tomas Walker talking to me about the G6. We go through a lot of questions, general stuff about Dexcom, adhesives, lots of questions. And then after we say thank you and goodbye, come back on and talk about Lily. So here is my interview and second interview with Tomas Walker. Tomas, great to talk to you again. I always enjoy our conversations and there is a lot on the docket. Thanks for having a conversation with me today. I appreciate it. No problem. It's good to talk to you, Stacey. You know, one of the things that came up recently, of course, was that Abbott's Freestyle Libre was approved. And there there seems to be, at least in some of the chat I'm hearing out there, and maybe it's it's more outside of the diabetes community in the marketplace, but a little bit of confusion about glucose monitoring systems. And I know Dexcom wanted to clear some of that up. Um, so what, what do you find that people are confused about? Is it the difference between the continuous and the flash technology? You know, I think that's a, that's 
an easy way to get confused. So when you look at our systems with the Dexcom G5 and our, our soon to come Dexcom G6 systems, we provide a proactive data stream. So we're always giving you a constantly updated stream of information to either the Dexcom dedicated receiver or the app running on your smartphone. When you use the flash technology or the, the Freestyle Libre systems, it requires that you actively scan the system to get the data. So this actually uh, creates a situation where if you're distracted, if you're sleeping, if you're driving, and you're not actively scanning, you won't get the alert that you may be having a high or a low blood sugar issue. So it, it is continuous in that it is constantly recording the glucose uh, information. It stores the last eight hours worth of data. and But you actually have to actively interact with the system to get the glucose data back. Before we go any further, because there's a lot of other things I know to talk about. I mean, you've already mentioned the G6, but mm-hmm. is is some of the reason that we're talking about this because, it, you know, the Libra is a, is a competitor. There are already other systems that say they're going to be using it like Bigfoot. Um, is there really confusion about this? And, and maybe it's a question I can't really ask you, or is it something you just want us to remind people about the, the differences? You know, I think it's important to understand the differences between the systems and pick the system that's going to provide you with the best experience. And everybody living with diabetes has a different lived experience. And you need to have the system that works best for you. Uh, One of the things that we've seen a lot of... um, a lot of people turning around from is that our system offers the ability to share and follow. So if you're following an elderly parent or if you're following a child, that's not something you can currently do with the Libre system. And it really just relates to how their technology works. Um, so this has been a big distinction. And as far as a competitor, you know, they have an interesting product. Uh, they've been on the market for three years in Europe. And um, as Kevin Sayer, our CEO said, it's like we've been competing against them for three years on the market in Europe, and we've had our best quarters ever in Europe for this year. Yeah, that's so, a good point. It's not just the yeah. U.S. Yeah, people are happy to have access technology to, to technology to improve their diabetes care. So you mentioned the G6. Let's just jump right in. My understanding is that it was submitted to the FDA already this year, and hopefully, you know, we're waiting for approval uh, out next year. What are the changes? What was actually submitted? What, what makes the G6 different? So the G6 system will be submitted to, or has been submitted to the FDA. Um, we've raised the wear time from seven days to 10 to let people have a little more lifespan out of the sensors. We're continuing to offer an integrated Bluetooth radio in the transmitter, so you'll still be able to get the data on your dedicated Dexcom receiver or on your smart device. You'll still be able to share and follow that data. We've improved the membranes of the sensor, so you no longer have to worry about the acetaminophen interference, which you know that in the G5 system, taking a dose of acetaminophen can cause the system to read erroneously high. It's very individual, and there's a lot of variance between how people respond to that. Uh, we've also reduced the number of calibrations. You know, we understand that people don't like to poke their fingers. I mean, who likes to go poke your finger? We understand that. But we've reduced that to once a day after the warm-up period or after the initial calibrations. So. Uh, we've offered several improvements. We also are going to be offering a predictive alert. It's going to be giving you warning before you get severely hypoglycemic to give you that 20 minutes you need to try to ingest some carbohydrates or take something to reverse the potential hypoglycemia. It also comes with an automated inserter, which is something patients have been asking for for a long time. You're familiar with our old inserter. It can be a little intimidating, especially the first time you look at it. But the new system is a very simple uh, peel, press, and and press the button system. It's going to be one-handed, easy to use. I think people are going to be really happy with that new inserter. Okay. Tomas, you just said a ton of stuff for the G6, so I'm going to go through it a little bit. Um, I know. (laughs) I feel like we're an infomercial. It slices. It dices. But the, the exciting thing for me is the inserter. So this, I mean, there's so much here that's good. But the inserter is something, as you say, it's, I, I guess we've, we've seen some pictures online and I'll, I'll link it up as well, but this is sort of like what people think of with the Omnipod, right? You stick it on your skin and you press a button. It's much more like that, yes. It's going to really hopefully improve the user experience. But what will improve the user experience, I mean, to use that phrase, and then to, to really make a big difference for a lot of people is that acetaminophen. Can you share, and if you're not clear, the generic name for Tylenol. So right now, if you have a Dexcom, you probably are aware that taking Tylenol may interfere. We've never really had a problem with it, but it may interfere and give you high uh, false highs. Can you share how that changed or just what the problem was in the first place, if people aren't familiar? 
Well, the problem really relates to how acetaminophen interacts with glucose oxidase membranes. So this has been a known issue impacting these sensors from day one of development. And what we've done uh, is basically change the membrane and the secret sauce to uh, no longer interact with uh, acetaminophen. And we've been doing extensive testing to make sure that there's no other interference we're missing. It's just fascinated me since the, we've used the Dexcom for four years, and it's always been fascinating to me that it's, it's acetaminophen, right? Why not other medications? Why not other? Are there any other instances, I mean, any rare medications that interfere with it, or is it just that? No, it's been primarily acetaminophen. Um, there was some concern uh, early on that maybe uh, ascorbic acid or salicylates like aspirin might interfere with the membranes, and they don't really seem to have any impact on that at all. It's so interesting, just the physiology of it all. Um, and then you mentioned the calibration. So the G6 would have two initial calibrations upon that two-hour warm-up and then one a day instead of two a day? Yeah, so the calibration scheme will be a little bit different. It's going to be the initial calibrations after the two-hour warm-up, and then there will be one at 12 hours later, kind of like you're used to now, and then it starts one a day after that. I got a question the other day that I thought was interesting, and I didn't really know the answer to. I'm sure you do. What's going on during that two-hour warm-up? Yeah, so what's actually happening during that two-hour warm-up is your body's getting used to the sensor, the sensor's getting used to your body. Anytime you insert a sensor, you're essentially creating a small amount of trauma in that local tissue environment, and that trauma causes an inflammatory response, it causes a wound response to the body is kind of the generic term we use to describe it, and the body has basically got to accept and get used to that wire, and the body has to get used to the wire being there. So the wires, the, the, the two have to get used to each other, and once they get through that initial warm-up window, that's when the sensor really starts to stabilize and perform better. Now, we've heard a lot of patients asking, can we reduce the warm-up window? And the answer to that is yes, and it's something we're actively looking at for future technology is to be able to bring that window down to a shorter warm-up period, uh, something, something we, really, we really do take to heart. Patients don't like having to wait that two hours. And warm-up periods are a time when you're more vulnerable to the potential risk of a hypoglycemia you weren't expecting. Uh, it leads me to another question I wanted to ask, which is when the Libra was um, approved here in the U.S., it had a, for whatever reason, a much longer warm-up period. And I think there was some concern that the FDA might look at the G6 with the, with the um, fewer calibrations and say the same thing. Are you at all concerned that you might have to have a longer warm-up period for fewer calibrations? No, no, not at all. So the, the Libre system in Europe, which where it's been available for about three years now, has a one-hour warm-up. When they brought the system to the U.S., um, they actually reduced the wear time from 14 days in Europe to 10 days in the U.S., and they increased the warm-up time from one hour to 12 hours. Um, and this really relates to I, what I assume is some performance around their technology. I don't have the exact reasons why, right. but... It's just a change in the device uh, from Europe to the U.S. Obviously, I can't ask you to really comment on what they're doing, but you haven't had any indication from the FDA that something similar might be asked. No, I would. No, we have no reason to believe they would ask us to change our warm up. Yeah, I mean, and this is just uh, this is my opinion. This is not. I don't know anything extra about this, but it would seem like if you have a longer warm up period, you know, if you guys could say, "Well, I'm sorry, we need a day," um, then the MARD would go down, right? Wouldn't the accuracy get better? Because that so, first day is the one that seems, where you know, as a, as a layperson, it seems to me that's the wonkiest. To use a technical term. Yeah, I, I, that's a good technical term. We can call it wonky. <laughs> the, for, for the first day is always a challenge for any sensor, primarily to the reasons I discussed, that your body is acclimating to the sensor and vice versa. The sensor is acclimating to you. Um, Improving that first day has been a challenge, but that's actually one of the other benefits you're going to see with the Gen 6 is we've improved our day one performance significantly. All right. So when we last talked, and, and I reserve the right to go back to the G6, when we, <laughs> when we last talked, we had spoken a little bit about the adhesive. You had said to watch. There was uh, some interesting news coming out about that. Can you tell me what happened? The process by which the adhesive is made or secured onto the sensor has changed? Because the, the upshot is we'd heard about less irritation from some people in the last couple of months. Yeah, so I, I can comment on that. We published a small paper in the Journal of Diabetes Science and Technology. The primary author on that last name is Giesen, G-I-S-I-N. And this is really a paper on some manufacturing changes that we undertook at Dexcom. 
essentially the little plastic horseshoe that holds the transmitter had been attached to the cloth lace patch using a medical grade cyanoacrylate, so kind of like a crazy glue, which are used commonly in healthcare. And we made some changes in manufacturing where instead of basically gluing the two together, we began to weld them. So there was actually a welding process where the plastic horseshoe is essentially heat welded to the lace patch. And then the adhesive layer that you're familiar with, the part that sticks on you, is then applied. And that seems to have um, changed the skin reaction for some people who were having problems with our sensors. If someone was having a, an adhesive issue, you know, a, you know, irritation, is there a date that they can kind of look to, or is uh, this just kind of rolling out? No, no, it's been rolled out. We did a we did a quiet rollout, and the improvements are the changes in manufacturing. And any sensor you pick today has the new technology. In. Excellent. Yeah, I know so. you all have been looking at that for a long time and and trying to make it better. I mean, when somebody needs to wear our sensors and they're having skin issues, it's a really complicated situation because they really want to benefit from the sensor. But if you constantly have to be treating a skin problem as a side effect from the sensor, it kind of becomes a vicious cycle. It's something we've been concerned about and we've been looking at, and I think that people will be pleased with the improvements they see in the sensors. Excellent. Something else that seems to have been quietly rolled out is this new receiver. I, I haven't seen it in person, but I've seen it on the website, and one or two people well, kind of on Facebook have helped. What is that? So the new receiver, we just tried to make a higher, um, a higher reliable and more functional receiver. People like touchscreen interfaces. You know, one of the interesting things we've seen around G5 is the vast majority of people prefer to use their smartphone. I mean, you can't get it out of my daughter's hand. So it's, <laughs> this, is, this is the reality that people are very attached to their smartphone devices, and the ability to put the CGM data on there has really improved it for a lot of people. But there's a small core of people that really do like or prefer to use the dedicated receivers, or maybe they want to use the dedicated receiver at night at home because they put their phone on Do Not Disturb. So we've been trying to improve the experience of the user with the dedicated receiver, and this latest generation is just exactly that. Now, uh, currently, uh, we are required to provide a receiver with every system we sell, and that is the, the, we will be upgrading to these new receivers as we go forward into our, into our next generation of products. And that's an FDA requirement. Yeah, the FDA does require we provide a dedicated receiver. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to Medicare. Can, can you talk a little bit about the latest on that? And if you're not familiar with the situation, and this will really be in layman's terms, uh, Tomas, I'll, I'll try to explain, is that if you, um, if you have Medicare paying for your Dexcom system, you may not use the phone with it. You cannot share or follow, which uh, I understand came from the, the government and did not come from Dexcom. And I guess my question is, what's going on? Are there still conversations about this? Because a lot of people are so unhappy about that. Yeah. So just to provide a little more clarity to that, there is a Medicare benefit for the Dexcom CGM because it's classified as a therapeutic CGM, meaning it's considered reliable enough to replace finger sticks for routine decision making. So currently, Dexcom is the only system that has that designation. When Medicare created this new category, they also classified it as DME. And the receiver is part of the DME or durable medical equipment. And the Medicare guidelines state that you have to use the DME product, the receiver, to receive your CGM data. Now, this has been an area of great concern because there's a lot of people who like to share and follow on an elderly parent. So it's fantastic that Medicare is now covering these devices. And it's a challenge that patients have been told that if you use your phone, it will not be considered a covered benefit. So discussions are still underway with this. We've had some very productive talks um, with Medicare. I do believe that they will adjust the guidelines to reflect that some people will want to use the phone, but we're still waiting for the final decision back from them. Um, but it's something that we're well aware of, and we agree with the patients. The patients should be allowed the opportunity to get the data in the best way that fits them and provides them with that safety they want. All right, so I have a couple of questions, as always, that I don't know if you can answer, but I will ask anyway, because I'm nosy like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, on, on social media lately, I've been seeing a lot of people who have updated their iPhones to newer iOS. I don't even know what version we're on, 11 something, and have reported some problems with the, with the, the whatever Dexcom app they're using. Um, we, I, I believe my phone is updated to the very latest. I haven't noticed an issue, but my son has an older iPhone. He is He's got like a five or something, you know, ancient. He's begging me for a newer one. Are there any 
restrictions or problems with the newer updates and separately the older phones? So anytime there's an iOS update, we get a chance to to preview it as an app developer and try to make sure our apps are going to work okay with it. There's always the risk when the final update is pushed out that there has been a tweak or a change that we didn't catch and it causes an incompatibility issue. Uh, This can affect both the current phones as well as the older phones. The good news is, is that we have a great app team who's really proactive in trying to squash these bugs. And if anybody is having issues, I strongly encourage them to call technical support because as soon as we know about it, we can start to address it. So um, we have, you know, we've seen a couple issues in the past. I will say that our team's been pretty good at pushing out the updates to, to squash them as quick as we can. But this is an area where the patients help us because we can test everything on the bench. We can do the validation and verification of the software. But there's a lot of difference from doing it there to putting it into the hands of thousands of people who are using it. Yeah, that's a so. great point. And so Benny doesn't need an iPhone X? My son can suffer uh, with his older phone? Oh, no, no. I'm absolutely positive your son needs an iPhone <laughs> X. And the 256 gigabyte one. And if you order now, you should have it by Christmas. Oh, my gosh. He's brutal. He's so brutal. It's so funny. Okay, so again, with, with my personal story here, we were Animus customers for a very long time. Um, it was the only pump we ever used since 2007, so well, more than 10 years. And we actually switched in September to Tandem because of the cartridge size. I've talked about this on the show before, about a month and a half before the news of Animus being no more came through, we started the process just for medical needs for my son, and and we've been very pleased with it. But this is a company question. Again, Tomas, I know you're you're on the medical side, but I got to ask, you know, Dexcom had a strong partnership with Animus. Dexcom has partnerships with Tandem and with Insulet, the makers of Omnipod. What, you know, what is the future like with those guys? Are you all tr- you're huddling together and trying to figure out how to make up for the loss of animus? Uh, you know, it's just disappointing for the community at large. I'd love to give you a chance to talk about it from your end. So when I was uh, just speaking from when I was still in practice, I was a big fan of the animus pump. And I, I think that the loss of animus to the pumping world it, is being felt because a lot of people really did like those pumps. However, it is what it is. The business decision has been made. Um, we do have very good relationships with Insulet and Tandem. They have really impressive programs they're working on and developing new platforms to continue to integrate and improve the experience with integrated CGM. I really see good things coming from these future partnerships. I'm going to ask you a question I know you can't answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> and if you answer it, maybe I'll get you that iPhone X. No, kidding. Um, the I have heard... Someone who talked to Medtronic a long time ago said that they were told that Medtronic has more people coming off warranty at any given time than Animus had customers. How do smaller pump companies like Tandem and Insulet compete with that kind of behemoth? Would it behoove you all to, I mean, I don't want to say Dexcom buying one of these guys, but, you know, make yourself super attractive and maybe we'll, maybe somebody else will buy you. We can get Google involved. I mean, I got $5. Maybe we can help out. (laughs) <laughs> so let me start by saying you're absolutely correct. I can't answer the question. <laughs> uh, but let me let me respond a little more a little more high level in that the pump world's a tough place. Uh, I mean, everybody's facing capitation, everybody's facing managed care, everybody's facing con- price controls, and healthcare is is a tough environment for a small company to survive in. I see some really amazing technologies being developed. I was really impressed by how well Tandem rolled out their X2 upgrade to allow the system to talk directly to the G5. And it's innovations like that where you're trying to support people and provide them a pathway to new technology without maybe requiring they go get an entirely new platform every time that I think are going to make the difference for the patient experience. The payers... You know, they have, they have a game and they have skin in this game also, and they're concerned about price controls and monopolies. And I think that the pump world is still a dynamic place, but it's also, it's also reflecting the changes in the market. Was there anything on, uh, you know, the Libre confusion, which is why you're really supposed to be talking to me, or anything yeah. else that you wanted to make sure to get to that I didn't ask about? You know, it's an exciting time for patients with diabetes. We continue to push the envelope and offer the best-in-class products for continuous glucose monitors with alerts and alarms, allowing you to share that data and really improve the lives of people with diabetes. The ability to follow a dependent child or an elderly parent 
has just been profound. There's going to be a really interesting paper published on this in the very near future, like very near, like next week, that is going to talk about the benefit of having access to that technology and the comfort it gives spouses and significant others and parents to be able to see this glucose information. I think the more we use 3CGM, the more we learn how to improve the experience. I think people are going to be really happy with our Gen 6 products. And we've heard loud and clear that people don't like the don't like being required to calibrate. And that's something we're looking at for the future for Gen 6. I did forget to ask you, um, with Tandem and with Insulet's future as they move toward integration, you're obviously working with all these companies with G6 to be able to move to that. I know it's up to them to talk to me about that, but can you just confirm that they are talking to you about it? You know, all of our partners who are using Dexcom systems are looking at how to trend or how to upgrade to the Gen 6 systems when they become available. Excellent. Yeah, let's hope that X2 computer plugin is the easiest way to go. We did that. We actually got the pump about two days before it was announced, and we were able, before I even went to my educator, we plugged it into the computer, we got the update. It was it was cool. It was really fun to see an insulin pump work like a modern piece of technology, if I can say that. <laughs> That's a great story, and that's what it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be a good experience for the patient and let them take advantage of these improvements as they come out. Tomas, it is always a pleasure to speak to you. I appreciate your openness and your willingness to answer some of these questions, and I hope we can talk again soon. Sure, Stacy. Happy to talk to you. Tomas, thanks for coming back on with me, first of all. I appreciate that. What, what is the announcement here from Lilly as it stands with Dexcom? You all are partnering in their next step to become – uh, device makers? Yeah, so thanks for having me back, Stacey. Um, so the announcement with Lilly is really a notif- it's basically a notification that we have an extended partnership going with Lilly right now. You know, Lilly is a, a great company. They're really a leader in the diabetes world and have been for generations. And they're showing increasing interest in providing patients with more options to manage their disease. And part of that is recognizing that they need to integrate CGM as part of that. Knowing that we're talking to you from the Dexcom point of view, I, I I don't know how much you can tell us about things on the Lilly side, but when they when they approached you, they talk about in this release the the president of Lilly says Dexcom will be an important collaborator in our mission. So does that mean this is a partnership like you have with Tandem or with Omnipod, where their device will rely on your sensors? They're looking at creating an ecosystem for people with diabetes that would include insulin pumps, that would include connected like like, say, Bluetooth-connected insulin pens, and apps and smart devices. And the Dexcom CGM would be an integral part of their ecosystem. Have you seen the pump that they talked about in the Wall Street Journal? Can you tell us anything about that? Okay. Sometimes people who are not familiar with diabetes devices don't do the best job of explaining them. And in the article, I couldn't tell if it was a patch pump or a tubed pump. Can you tell us a little bit about what you can share? It's probably closer to a patch pump, and I would have to encourage you to talk to Lily about that and see what they want to discuss about their pump project publicly. Yeah, no doubt. I'll be talking to Lily for sure, or at least trying to. Um, Absolutely. Um, Are there any – is there something markedly different, I guess is what I'm asking, from what you're doing with Lily than your other partners? I don't think I would say it was markedly different. I would say that what makes it unique is Lily's very large footprint in this space and their commitment to people, to helping people with diabetes. You know, Lily has a very large uh, presence in the diabetes world and has, you know, for more than 50 years. So I think what they bring to the table is not just the passion for helping people who live with diabetes, but the depth of experience and product line. They offer insulin. They're getting into the insulin. They have insulin pens. They're interested in the insulin pump space. So they're really looking at how they can offer patients a more cohesive experience. And that, I think, is a unique thing they bring to the table. So I guess what we have to do in terms of our homework is compare a company like Lilly to a company like Medtronic and think, okay, well, are we talking? Everybody's kind of partnering up and finding their buddies in the sphere as we all want the businesses to succeed. I mean, from where I sit as, as a, a parent and a patient, you know, that kind of thing, and think, all right, you guys got this. You got who's, who, you know, how the health of the industry will move forward as we talked just the other day about how it's, it's a tough business. I mean, I think Lily coming in is a good business move, but I wonder if ultimately it's going to be okay for patients. And I guess that's a bit of an editorial statement considering all of the talk we've heard of the last two years of the price of insulin. 
D, is this going to be an affordable product? You know, I, I, I don't think I can comment on the business plan side of things. I think I would have to send you back to Lily to talk about that. But we all recognize that patients need to be able to access these devices. And part of access is affordability. Okay. I mean, every question I have is really for Lily, Tomas. So I will definitely, I mean, it really is. You know, you guys are Dexcom and Lily is Lily. You know, you know what kind of situation I'm in this morning. One of the things that was interesting to me that this kind of seemed to come out of nowhere. Um, obviously, Lily didn't start working on this yesterday, and neither did you all. Can you share a, just a little bit of insight without specifics, perhaps, of there seems to be a lot of product or a lot of movement out there that we really don't hear about day to day. Is it, you know, as we see animus going out of business and people worried about the future, are, are there more solutions and things coming out that that we don't hear about? You know, there are there is a lot of interest out there in coming up with alternative solutions for patients for making sure people have choices. You know, losing animus was was a really significant blow to the diabetes community, and it's, I'm sad to see them go. So, yeah, you know, the short answer is yeah. We we have a lot of partnerships, and there's always a lot of discussion, and there's there's people doing interesting things all over the world, trying to make sure that patients have these choices. Because at the end of the day. It's really good. That's really the key thing, isn't it? That you have the choice for the therapy you want for yourself or your child to give you the best care option. So we, yes, we have quite a few partnerships going and Dexcom has really taken the approach to have as open an ecosystem as possible to provide people access to our data. I think that's all I can ask on Lily. But one thing I did forget as I was listening back, you said with the G6 that it would have some kind of predictive low the new G6, if approved as it is, what can you elaborate on what that means? Because I, I listened back to it and I'm not sure I understood. Sure. With, with the G6 system, the patients will have the ability to turn on or turn off a prediction to try to give them about 20 minutes warning that they may be at risk for a severe hypoglycemic event. And uh, the idea is to give you that 20 minutes to, to allow you to ingest some carbohydrates or take corrective action to prevent that hypoglycemia. So in other words, like I'll give my son as an example, we keep his low alert on 80. This would supplement that in that if he hits 80 and I say, oh, okay, 80 is fine. But if he kept going, it would alarm again before it hits that 55 that we can't turn off. Correct. You would still have the patient. You would still have the user definable alarm. You could set your own hypoglycemic alert for 70 or 80 or 90. But there would be this extra safety alarm that you could turn on or off to warn you about the the risk of hitting that 55 milligram per deciliter hard alert threshold. Oh, I love that. So. That's great. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacy Sims. As I said, I really appreciate Tomas Walker coming on and telling us what he can about the G6, about other developments in the company, and about Lilly. Now, honestly, you know, we understand Tomas works for Dexcom. He doesn't work for Lilly. He cannot speak for them. Off the air, he gave me a couple of names of people to try to talk to over at Lilly, and I'm going to pursue that. We shall see, because a lot of speculation about what's going on over there, and we don't have a lot of information, but I will link up the Wall Street Journal article and the press release. I mentioned that, and and that listener is Richard, Richard in Toronto, and thank you so much for that. He had sent me the press release that Dexcom put out right after that Wall Street Journal report came out, and I really appreciate that. If you ever have any information or any questions, please go ahead and send them my way. Richard also went on to write and ask about, will there be more information in this Dexcom Lily partnership about enhancing the Dexcom app to do things like, you know, carb ratio, correction ratio. And, and Tomas addressed that. And, and other companies are working on this as well. This is more of a smart pen. Most people who have diabetes do not have an insulin pump and. MDI, multiple daily injections, there's a lot of room for help and growth, uh, you know, in technology in that field. And as we've spoken to other companies, you know, Bigfoot, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, the makers of InPen from Companion Medical, these are things that are expected to come to market or be on the market right now. And Lily is definitely going to be a piece of that too. So Richard, stay tuned. Thank you so much for your email and keep me posted if you hear anything else. I really appreciate your input.
Time to move ahead to Shop Talk, and this week we are talking to the inventor of the Genteel. You may have seen this on social media, or maybe someone you know uses it. It's a different looking lancing device, you know, to poke your finger and get the blood that you need to test your blood glucose level. But with the Genteel, you can use different parts of your body, not just your fingertip. I'll let Dr. Christopher Jacobs explain that more. He is the inventor of the Genteel and the head of the company now. I'll talk a little bit about our experience with the Genteel after the interview, but here's Dr. Jacobs. Genteel really has two advantages for anyone with diabetes. First of all, it is the only FDA-cleared device that allows you to equally test all over your body with restrictions, which I'll tell you about in a minute. Secondly, not only can you give your fingers a break by not testing on them, but there is no pain as you personally experienced yourself. So, And we can do redraw on your son to show that that works too. Redraw says you can go back to the same site all day long and redraw the blood. So a person with diabetes that tests, how often does your son test or he doesn't? Oh, no, he does. Well, we have the Dexcom, so when he's wearing it two to three times a day, I'd say. Okay. So instead of three pokes, three holes in his body, one hole in the morning and redraw from the same all day long. So that's the advantage of Genteel. Give your fingers a break test anywhere on your body with absolutely no pain and much fewer poke holes in your in your body. The restrictions are if you did something that is going to rapidly change your blood, I mean rapidly, like you just ate a big sugar load on one side, which would drag sugar values up, better to test on your palm. Now, palms, there are many, many peer-reviewed articles that say you cannot tell the difference between palms and fingertip. So you could test on your palm, and I'll show you on me testing on my palm. The second uh, restriction is if you're going, you just worked, ran a marathon, and you might be going low. So, plus there's the obvious. If you're feeling, uh, my blood sugar feels wrong like you just had, go ahead and test on your palm or your fingers. But in your case, that's been a gradual feeling. There is a 15-minute delay, if you plotted it, between the fingers and the rest of the body, except for the palm. The palm tracks completely. So you never, ever have to test on your fingers. It's either palm or the rest of the, the, rest of the body. Why did you come up with this? What was the impetus? A friend, a friend of mine who, his name was George, very, very severe type 2 diabetic, and he came to me one day and said, Chris, look here, look at my fingers. I can't feel anything. I play the guitar. I can't feel the strings. Can't you, and you know, you're one of them genius types. Can't you run along and develop something for me that would uh, allow me to test elsewhere? Well, Stacy, as I was developing something that allowed him to test elsewhere, I found a way to make it painless, just like you experienced. And so I combined them, and the first three that I did for him as a friend, he came back to me after a while. He gave two to friends of his that were di- had diabetes. He came back to me after a while and said, Chris, I was retired, by the way, at that time. I had had a business. I sold a business. He says, you've got to come out of retirement. There are 27 million people that test daily. Can you imagine the pain that you can alleviate? took me to dinner. He paid for the dinner. And uh, <laughs> and so he said, I'll do the business side. That's what his thing was. You just come along and develop that product to the point where you just pick it up and use it like we just experienced. And that's how Genteel came about. Our company mission, seriously, we're worldwide because diabetes is worldwide, is to reduce pain as much as possible. We have considerable data that shows if it doesn't hurt, people will test more often. And if they test more often, we have the data to show and peer-reviewed articles that show you can drop your A1C one full point just by monitoring testing for two reasons. One is that, of course, you know how to dose more properly. And second... Just the fact that you're testing more often and you're looking at numbers 
gives you the internal strength not to reach for that donut, not to reach for that candy bar, to stop eating before you're done. You don't need somebody to smack you in the head. You looked at that number, you said, "Eh, I don't need that this afternoon. I can get away with it. One full point from seven, average from 7.4 to 6.3. And of course, all the information about the Genteel in the show notes or at diabetes-connections.com. And as I say every show, if you're listening on social media, please go ahead to diabetes-connections.com to make sure that you have all the information about each episode. If you're listening on a podcast app, it's easy. Just click on the show notes. You know, some of them you have to click twice more information or whatever. But on social media, it's, it's a little different and it's hard to see the links. So please go ahead and visit the website if you want to learn more. I do have lots of links for every episode. And like most of the uh, vendors and exhibitors and companies featured in the Shop Talk segment, I did this interview at the Friends for Life conference way back in July. And one of the reasons I was holding on to this genteel interview is because we tried it, we purchased it at Friends for Life, and I wanted to give you a true review. So here's what happened. And unfortunately, I really still don't have one for you because I hope I'm not the only person in the world that this happens to. You know, we come home from these conferences with lots of different devices and things to sample. And um, it, it's just so funny. So Benny goes to sleepaway camp immediately following the Friends for Life conference. Usually he goes away to a non-diabetes camp for four weeks. And he's done that for, boy, this was his fifth summer. So he took the Genteel with him because he loved it. He had um, he had worked with Dr. Jacobs at the conference and they showed him how to use it. They used it on me. Uh, you know, I forgot they we referred to that during the interview. I I occasionally get low blood sugar. I don't have diabetes, but every once in a while I get those low feelings. And um, I was 58. They they checked me with the Genteel, and it really is different. It does you don't feel anything. You can do different parts of the body. It's very cool, but it's not super user friendly immediately out of the box. And so when you have a 12 year old who went to summer camp with people who are not 100% familiar with type 1 diabetes and could definitely not help him with the Genteel, he used it once or twice and didn't like it and put it away. I have heard from other people, there is a friend of mine here in the Charlotte area who loves it, who put a video on Instagram, I'll link that up if I can, who says, if you just watch the directions and the video, it's not that difficult and it works really well. And what I was alluding to, you know, why we waited so long is I have been planning to sit down with Benny and go over the video and use the Genteel and really learn it. And of course, here it is now, December, you know, almost, and we haven't done it. And so, sorry about that. But when we do, I will give you a true review. And if you have a review of the Genteel, please let me know or you can post it when I post the show on social media. But I feel kind of bad about that. But, you know, life happens. And I'm honest with you. You know, we're not making stuff up around here. So I will definitely let you know because it it looks like such a cool device, especially for people who have type 2 diabetes and are so fearful of checking. I know a lot of adults who, you know, they don't check because they're afraid. And it seems kind of, I know it can sound kind of silly to those of us who have to prick our kids' fingers, you know, eight to 10 times a day when they were two. You you just do what you got to do. But, you know, I get it. I really do. And so why can't we make life easier for everybody? All right, off the soapbox. Sorry. As I said, next week, we are talking Disney. I am so excited about this show because I am an outrageous Disney planner, fanatic, weirdo. I don't know. I just, I don't, we don't go that often and I don't have Disney stuff all over my house. But when we take a trip there, I plan for months and I am smack dab in the middle of that. So to get to talk to Len Testa, who is the guy who basically invented the touring plan strategy uh, was a real treat for me, and I can't wait to bring you that interview. But I'm talking to him because he's got a whole thing about diabetes. Really interesting stuff. And we talked to the endocrinologist who brought the project to him as well. So I, I'm excited to bring that to you. As always, a big thank you to my editor, John Buchanis of Audio Editing Solutions. And thank you as you listen every week. I am so excited to have you here. Join the Facebook group. We're having some fun there. Diabetes Connect the group. And, you know, just to spend an hour each week with people who get it is a real privilege. So tell a friend about the show, bring more people on board. We'll get these stories out there and we'll grow the community. Thanks for listening. I'm Stacey Sims, and I'll see you back here next week. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.